Thank you indeed. Uh, that was showing some of the enormous potential that open innovation brings, and it also made me unfortunately aware that I have about a 15-watt brain. Okay, now let's bring it to market specifics. As Thomas explains, when open innovation is used in a specific product, how that has an impact in the market. So MySQL, an open source success story, is the final talk of this session before we run into the questions. Yeah, so um, thank you for having me, Graham. And uh, um, we had uh, now some outlooks to, to the future, and I'll be mostly talking about history, actually, um, around MySQL. So uh, MySQL, a, a successful open source project. Uh, you see my name there. I've been with uh, the MySQL group since uh, 2003. And I put 2001 there uh, in, in parentheses because that's actually when I joined the team at Ericsson uh, working with databases, which eventually in 2003 became uh, acquired by MySQL. So uh, I was with, with uh, the database product, which is still with MySQL, uh, uh, already from, from 2001. But 2003 uh, was my first uh, hire day in, in, in MySQL. Um, so I, I think a lot of you have heard about MySQL. It's a, it's a, uh, the, the most commonly known product is the MySQL server, which is a, a, a database. Uh, we actually have two databases. Uh, one which is less uh, known is the uh, MySQL cluster, which is a clustered version. And, and that was uh, part of that is the technology that came in with that Ericsson acquisition. And, but then also around this, uh, these two products, we have many other products. So our product portfolio, which is developed in my team at, at Oracle, is, is actually around 10 or so uh, products. So I, but I won't go in, uh, into those, but I will just be touching on those. Uh, MySQL's history started in uh, Finland and Sweden uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s. And these were a bunch of consulting projects that were done uh, for uh, various companies. So they were a small team, just a few people. Uh, they helped with managing data on flat files. Uh, eventually, they come to realize that we need some sort of standardized interface to work with that data. So on top of that, they built the first uh, SQL interface, and eventually this uh, became a product called the MySQL Server, which had its first release in 1997. Uh, from the get-go, they started out as a sort of free open source uh, on Linux, but it was paid on Windows, so they had this weird idea that, that uh, we'll go free on Linux, but we'll somehow get money from the, from the Windows users. Uh, at that point in time, it was... Uh, very much trial and error. Uh, uh, they're all newbies uh, uh, in the area. Uh, and, but eventually, in 2001, they founded the company MySQL. Uh, a lot of things were cleaned up. They got themselves a real CEO. Uh, they got VC funding. Uh, a lot of things around who owned what around the IP was cleaned up. Uh, they cleaned up the license model, uh, went for GPL. Uh, in that time, uh, they started a real sales organization uh, to sell the product, and also something called LAMP, which I will come back to, uh, came about at that point in time, because I, I personally believe that was very important in, in terms of making uh, MySQL successful. Uh, in 2003, so I'm just, a few highlights here. In 2003, I chose that date because it was the date that I joined, but also they got a big round of VC funding. They made a huge deal with SAP. Um, they acquired this uh, cluster technology from Ericsson. And at that point in time, there were about 30, 40 engineers. Um, I'd like to sort of hear just, interestingly enough, this is a, a company which starts in in, in uh, uh, Sweden and, and Finland. I hire a lot of people in Russia because they had connections via Monty into, into Russia. But the money comes from the US. So that's something to sort of take into European hearts. Uh, 
always happens, right? Uh, uh, it, it, in 2004, my next number is not 2004, but in 2004, they set up the headquarters in the US. And uh, for a number of reasons, that's where they had their major investors, Benchmark Capital, uh, and also that's where the customers were. Um, everybody that, that uh, um, and the customers and users were primarily startups uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the web arena. And so it was quite natural that that's where they established uh, 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 the headquarters. But I think that's something to think about when it comes to sort of building business around uh, uh, open source or any software uh, company uh, startup in, in, in Europe. How do we uh, keep them in Europe? How do we make sure that there's a, a playing field for them where they can get funding and they can grow and, 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 and so on? Uh, next big milestone was the way uh, we structured the offering, something called MySQL Enterprise, and I'll come back to that. Uh, a lot of the struggle in the beginning is how do we actually make money on this open source uh, product? And in 2005, we came up with something. It was actually called MySQL Network at the time, uh, mimicking a lot of what Red Hat was doing around their network offering. Uh, eventually, it became MySQL Enterprise. In 2008, uh, we went to a meeting in, in, in the US. Everybody thought that uh, now we're going to announce our IPO. Uh, but instead, Jonathan Swartz showed up on scene and said, OK, we acquired you guys. So we're now uh, uh, part of, my, uh, uh, of, of, of Sun Microsystems. It, it was a, a fairly big uh, deal. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, it was bought, the company was bought for, for a billion uh, US dollars. Uh, at that point in time, we had grown to about 120 engineers. I focused on the number of engineers here, but um, the, the size of the company was about 500 people at, at that point in time. And then finally, we ended up where we're sitting now at Oracle. Uh, in 2010, Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems, uh, and that then at that point in time included about 160 engineers in the, uh, on the MySQL uh, project as, as, as such. Um, I think this is a very typical story of, of any startup uh, starting, whether you start with open source or, 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 or um, uh, closed source or whatever you do. I mean, this is a very common scenario uh, in terms of where you end up in the end. Somebody buys you, uh, especially when you bring in uh, venture capital. It's what the venture capital wants, right? They, they want to make an exit somehow. I think, I don't, I don't know the numbers, but I think uh, uh, a large portion become acquired. Uh, very few go to an IPO and actually become uh, a large corporation in the end. Uh, today, we're still Oracle, as I said. We've continued to grow the team. Uh, we're now over 200 engineers. And today, there's some 15 plus million installations of, of the MySQL server worldwide. Uh, I think uh, from, from uh, Number of installations, and I think also revenue-wise, uh, uh, MySQL is, is a success story. It was definitely a, a success story for the founders and, and, the, and the venture capitalists, making a lot of money on that, uh, on that um, uh, transition back in 2008. Uh, but I think as a product as well, it's, it's, it's highly successful. Uh, looking at MySQL, uh, the business, uh, I think one thing which is not unique for MySQL in, 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 in the open source world, but, but it's definitely not the way it always is, is that MySQL always owned the IP. And we always made sure we owned the IP because we, we thought uh, all the time that this was very important um, to do that for, for um, um, well, keeping the value within the company. Uh, that's definitely not the case for a large portion of what, for example, Red Hat builds on. I mean, they build a lot on, on something that's owned by some other entity. Um, but it allowed us to do something called dual licensing, if you've heard the term. Since we own the IP, we could license the, the software under whatever license we chose to do. So we chose to do uh, uh, license under GPL uh, as an open source license. That's how it became available to the large masses. And a lot of uh, small companies use that GPL uh, licensed software to uh, 
build their own applications, uh, mostly on, 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 on the web side. But we could also provide it as a commercial uh, licensed uh, product. <laughs> Uh, so with, with Embedded and the way GPL works, there were no issues. They had to go with commercial. So we always had good traction in the Embedded space. In the enterprise, we were always our own worst competitor because there was always this free choice out there, uh, which was our own product that we released under GPL. Um, uh, and the GPL version was just as good as uh, the, the, uh, the commercial one. So ever since the beginning, when I was in discussions in 2003, this was the constant struggle that we had. How do we compete with ourselves? Um, there was always, of course, the consulting and support option um, and just going with the embedded. But this is very uninteresting for uh, the venture capitalists. That's, there's no money in investing in companies that do just this. Uh, the potentials are not uh, high enough. T-shirts. This is actually a serious suggestion by, by one, one, one of the founders that, why don't we sell T-shirts with the logo MySQL on it? Maybe we can make some money there. OK, that was not uh, taken seriously, but uh, it, it was from the very beginning, we, we have to go with the enterprise. That's where the, the money is. We have to some, some, somehow uh, get the companies that, that, that are so many of them, enterprises around the world, to, 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 to buy and pay for our, our product. Uh, we need a product to sell. That's what the venture capitalists needed. Uh, and the need for commercial differentiation. There needs to be a difference between the free and open source version and what we sell. There must be a, enough value add uh, so that, you, that you, can, you, can, you, you have something to sell. And this has been the same discussion in 2001, and this is the same discussion we have today, actually. So uh, it's, it's, it doesn't differ a lot at all. As I said already earlier, I, I mentioned uh, MySQL Enterprise, or First, it was called network as sort of the, the, what we eventually ended up with. Uh, it's a subscription model. A lot of other softwares sell by license. You get a perpetual license or something like that, often at a fairly high price, but then you get to use it for an extended period of time. It doesn't work out so well with, with something because, I mean, the price point zero versus a high price, it's not, you, you have a hard sell there. Um, rather paying some small amount, but you pay it year by year by year, uh, a subscription. Uh, and also uh, not...